Greetings. Happy Friday to all my friends out there in Summerland. This is Christy Calloway, your Executive Director for Art Schools Network, and I am tickled to have with us today Jessica Wilt, the founder of Arts Ed Tech NYC. She's going to be taking us through the beginnings of Social Media 101 Twitter. The um, organization that's hosting this call right now is Art Schools Network, and we're about getting people together, making things happen for our students in arts education. If you have any ideas about how to empower yourself or others so that they can make things better for kids, please let me know. We're happy to have a short or long webinar on the topic, possibly a series like we're doing with Jessica. Today, we're going to be asking you some questions, giving you the opportunity to chat, and um, trying to get you involved a little bit so we can judge the abilities of the audience. You'll see on the right-hand side of your screen there um, these kinds of boxes, and we just ask that you pay attention. We're going to prompt you very shortly um, to take a poll. So here is um, the wonderful beginning of Social Media 101 with Ms. Jessica Wilt. Jessica, please introduce yourself and let's get started. Thanks, Christy. I am so happy to be back with Art Schools Network today. We had done an overview of social media, um, I guess last month it was, and I'm really excited to talk about Twitter today because I'm addicted to Twitter. And I know it sounds crazy, but really being engaged and actively involved using Twitter has really changed both my professional and personal life. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about how to use Twitter. Today is really basic, so I'm not going to go into great detail about a lot of things. Um, just really a simple overview of what it is and how it can be used. So before we get started, I'd like to pull everyone who's participating today just to get a feel for um, your experience using Twitter. How familiar are you with using Twitter? If you could take a minute to answer using these three beginner, intermediate, advanced options, that will be helpful for me to know as we move forward um, today with our, with our talk. Okay, I'm seeing it come in, and I'm assuming, oh, we got 100% voted. So I don't know if everyone can see that. Oh, yes, yeah, they can. beginner, okay. 63% beginner, 25% intermediate, and 13% advanced. Okay, so we'll keep this basic and simple for everybody today. So let's get started. Why join Twitter? Um, I had written... A couple years ago, an arts blog, Americans for the Arts has this really great blog series called Arts Blog, about how we're constantly being bombarded with information, whether it be email, text messaging, all these various social media platforms. And then one long sentence had included Twitter. But I have to be honest, at that time I wasn't actively using Twitter, and someone emailed me asking me what my Twitter handle was. So I got caught. And in that moment, I decided, all right, it's time to jump in and figure out how to use Twitter. So there's another art blog that I wrote as a follow-up, and Christy has a link to that page so that everybody can check it out. It gives you kind of a more detailed description of how you can use Twitter for things like networking, gathering really important information, uh, building your community, whether that be your professional community or personal. Connectivity in real time. What I love about it, it just constantly is updating every second, um, which can be overwhelming, but um, it's really helpful to find information uh, quickly. And to be inspired. I just really love the connections that I make and the conversations that I have with people. You can move on to the next slide. OK, so this is a basic Twitter profile page. Um, I would encourage everyone, as you are following along, if you do have a Twitter profile, to go ahead and have it open either on your browser or on a smart device. There is a difference. Um, online, the, the browser view is quite different than the app, like if you have it on a smartphone or an iPad. And honestly, I actually use the app more frequently than I do the online browser. But this is basically what it looks like. Um, 
Twitter just did a complete overhaul recently where they're starting to look more like Facebook and putting out a lot more information. Um, it was originally created just to put out short bursts of information, and now it's getting a little more robust. So you can see there's the profile picture. Um, I like to change the larger picture in the background based on the season. We've got Fourth of July coming up. Um, this background information, a quick bio, and of course everything is in 140 characters, so it's short and sweet. Um, Can I get you to back up, Jessica? Um, yeah. Okay, good. The, go back to creating your profile. I noticed 65% of our people have probably are new or do not have a profile. What mm -hmm. kind of information I see on the left? Um, I see the button that says Edit Profile, and I see on the left the list. Is, is that the stuff that you are describing when you say create a profile? That's yeah, it. if you look at the right-hand corner, there's like a, it looks like um, that, that circle between the, yes, there. It's a gear. That's, the gear. that's your settings, and that is where you would go in and set up um, your photos. And if you look to the left under my name, um, that's a really short identifier of some of the things that I'm involved in. So when someone's searching for you, it's really helpful, and, and I talk about this a little bit later in the do's and don'ts, make sure that you have a, a recent photograph of yourself. Um, sometimes people like to put up their dogs or flowers or things that um, aren't necessarily you. And I find it's really helpful, especially if I'm at a conference or an event where people can instantly recognize me uh, based on the photograph. Um, what so that's about, really important. It is important, and you're making me wonder what I'm doing to myself with my soccer ball for the World Cup right now. With regards to um, that picture, what if you represent a company and you want it to be the logo of your school? You'd want it to be the whatever branding you use. Yeah, okay. thanks for pointing that out. If you're an organization, um, with anything from a marketing perspective, whether it's your Twitter page, your Facebook page, you really want to streamline um, the look and the images. And this is an example of Art Schools Network's um, profile page. So this so is what great we did, from... Yeah, we, go ahead. I'm sorry, Jessica. I'm taking over your... No, show. I was just going to say it's, it's great <laughs> from an organizational perspective um, to see something like this. So what I did, just so everyone knows, I'm no smarty pants, and I just um, cut and pasted these images and created this profile a couple of years back, whenever, whatever that says, joined in 2010, and I've been learning from my colleagues um, like Jessica and others, and, and so I just want to encourage everyone to know, you don't have to be a pro. If I can do it, you can do it, and, um, and I've been running this now for a couple of years, and only in the last year, because of my friends like Jessica and others who have taught me little shortcuts and tricks. Um, it's, it's so much fun to be a part of the Twitter world. And I agree with you wholeheartedly, Jessica. What Twitter looks like on my phone is completely different than what it looks like mm -hmm. on my computer. And as an organization on my computer, I use Twitter to share resources and promote schools' um, successes. I notice um, when I'm on my phone, because I have less control, I can't type or have the mouse. Like yeah. That's more intimate, it seems, when I'm using it. Like, I do more things that are more informal. I'm retweeting or liking more or favoriting. Right. Um, if okay. you could go back to that previous slide sure. really quickly. Um, I agree with you. Learning how to use Twitter is a process. And near the end, I'll give you some simple tips of some things that you'll want to do just to get started. Um, but like you said, over time, you start to learn how to use all the various functions. Um, there is Twitter lingo. There, there is a specific way of, um, because you have to remember, this is 140 characters. You're not going to be composing full, real sentences. Um, so, yeah, it takes time. I would say I'm about two years into this, and it really took me about a year before things started to take off. As you can see, I'm an active tweeter. I have over 20,000 tweets. Um, and that's a combination of me putting out information, of me retweeting other people's comments, and favoriting other people's comments. Um, and, and I've also noticed uh, numbers aren't everything. Yes, I may have 1,655 followers. 
there are others who have thousands and thousands of followers. What I like is this genuinely is a community that I interact with. Um, people will always be unfollowing you. Don't get them. Don't get offended by that. Um, they just simply aren't the right people to be involved in your community. I have noticed, however, um, the more followers you get, or the more people that you follow in the main feed, which is like that steady stream of when all the the um, comments come up, you start to miss things when there are more people. Um, and I've noticed that happens with Facebook, too. So I'm, sometimes I feel like I'm missing out on information. But you know, oh I, well. I, hear, I hear what you're saying. And I, I, so let's look at each one of these little areas. So right in the middle of the page, can, is my arrow showing up on the screen? Yes. So, so that's shows, the number of tweets since, since day one that I started on Twitter. I have put out over 20,000 <laughs> <laughs> messages. And a lot of those you're retweeting. Yes. Right. Let's, let's and look then at these photos photos. and video that uh -huh. since the beginning of time, I've put up a combination of 930 photos and videos. I love taking photographs. Um, I've been doing a fun Instagram campaign, uh, 100 Days I Love You New York, which you can follow that hashtag. Um, and I'll get into more of the definitions of what all these things are that I'm talking about in a second. So I have 1,158 people following me. I'm following, no, sorry, I have that flipped. 1,158 people I'm following. 1,655 followers who are actively following me and their feed. And then I've favorited um, other tweets. This is like a like on Facebook um, 1,963 times. Let's go ahead and move forward. OK. You got it. Um, to more of the description of how this all works. Okay. So I'm going to use the right hand. You see this um, screenshot of a Twitter conversation. And I'll talk through quickly about basically how it works. So Twitter consists of short 140 character phrases known as tweets. So basically, whatever sentence, little paragraph you put out is known as a tweet. Um, these conversations, you can include photos, video, and URL links, which will you know, take you back to a website. Um, and also, just to throw out, there are ways to shorten URL links. Sometimes URL links can be really long. Um, there's a couple sites. One is called Bitly, B-I-T-L-Y, and Owly, O-W dot L-Y, where you can copy and paste the URL link into that, and then it shortens it for you so that you can use it on Twitter. But basically, the feed is that running long list of content. And you have your own personal feed which just tracks everything that you put out on Twitter. And then there's the home feed, where everyone that's following you or that you are following, you can see the steady stream of content that way. The handle is basically the profile user's um, name. It's what identifies either the person, the business, or group. So anything with an at symbol before, is that identifier. So mine is Jessica L. Wilt. Um, and then the hashtag is uh, the number sign. And anything with um, the hashtag before it identifies a word that can be searchable. So for, for us in our field, arts ed is a really popular um, category for today's talk. I made up arts ed tweet. People make up hashtags all the time. But it's a great way to, um, in the search field, you can just type in um, a person's name. Or if you know what the handle is, you can search the user's profile that way. Or using the number sign or hashtag is another great way to follow specific conversations. If do, you look um, to the right. Do, does it matter if it's lowercase or uppercase? Because I'm noticing that you No, it doesn't. Great. Mm -mm. 
I just like to use capital letters so that visibly sometimes it it stands out. But no, that's a great that's a great question. You don't have to capitalize anything. Um, so I was at the Americans for the Arts conference a few weeks ago, and during one of the arts ed sessions, um, somebody put out a really great point. And when I when I quote someone, if it's if I'm sure that it's a direct quote, I will put it in quotation marks. But if I don't know the person's name, and if I didn't quite capture everything they said, I'll just kind of do what I did here, and I, I posted Arts Ed. And again, this is Twitter language. Arts Ed is barometer for quality within polarized US education landscape. Arts Ed can help solve greater challenges, must collaborate. And then AFTACON was the hashtag for the conference. So if you used AFTACON in all of your tweets, in the searchable field, you can type in AFTACON in everything, anyone at the conference. You can follow that way. So as it turns out, Charles Jensen responded. And if you notice, he put a period before the at Jessica L. Wilt. I still don't quite get what, what this is all about. Supposedly, it's a, a direct message to me so that other people can't see it. Um, the jury's still out on that. I'm not really sure how it works. But anyway, he wrote um, this tweet back to me. And it's funny because his colleague, Danielle, um, at Arts for LA was the person who had mentioned this comment. So it just... <laughs> It's fun. It's a great way to interact with people in real time around really important things that we're passionate about. And for me and everyone on this call today, I'm sure arts education is at the top of your list. So that's one example of how it works. If you want to move on to the next slide. This is another example. Um, New York City Salt is uh, at the school program here in New York City that focuses on photography. They have a really great partnership with Getty Images. Um, and this shows how you can interact in a really positive way. Um, they had posted this quote with this beautiful photograph. And I just simply retweeted it. I didn't comment. I didn't say anything. But they were really nice. And they wrote back, thanks for the retweet. And you're amazing, which they didn't have to say, which is very nice. And then you can see on the left hand how I responded. Um, and RT is short for retweet, which I'm just noticing leads me to the top right hand corner. So um, when you're following people, you can just simply retweet a comment. You don't have to do anything at all but hit the retweet button. And RT is what um, that stands for. If you want to favorite uh, a comment, which is like a star, um, you can do that as well. And there's a favorite button. And within the Twitter community, we call each other tweets. Um, another <laughs> <My> Twitter <laughs> link. No tweet. We're tweets. We're tweets today. How cute. So, Really quickly, Twitter is fantastic for information gathering, like I had said before, connecting with people, organizations. Like, if I have heard of an organization, or if I have heard somebody's name, and I go through the search process, and I find them, um, that instant connectivity that happens on Twitter is great. Sometimes things get lost in email, or you can't find people's contact information. Um, I found this as a great tool for quickly getting in touch with other people. It's wonderful for customer service. I use it all the time um, for companies like JetBlue, Zipcar. I had a problem with Time Warner a few months ago, and instantly they responded rather than me spending hours on the phone trying to talk to a human being. And audience engagement or a way to promote your program. I know organizations in arts ed are starting to use Twitter a lot more in a visual capacity, just like New York City Salt did here on the left-hand side, where they're sharing a photograph of one of their students. Um, and a learning tool in the classroom. We don't have time to go into that today. That would be a whole other session. 
but um, I'm seeing teachers and teaching artists using Twitter in the classroom as a, as a way of engaging students around a specific topic, like learning how to, um, learning about Shakespeare in 140 characters. It can be <laughs> really fun. Um, and live tweeting, which it's hard for me right now to be facilitating this webinar and live tweeting at the same time. But basically, live tweeting is in the moment. If you're on a webinar right now and people are putting out tweets using that arts ed tweet hashtag, if you're at a conference like Americans for the Arts using the Afticon, um, live tweeting is happening in real time. And there's debate right now about whether that's a great audience engagement tool. Should people be using their cell phones during a ballet performance or um, at the symphony having their phones out live tweeting? I know there are a lot of arts and cultural institutions that have been playing around with this. Um, again, it's still not, not clear yet if that's proper audience etiquette. And here's just a quick listing of popular hashtags. So if you want to start following conversations on Twitter, um, Twitter chats is a big category. edu is fantastic. That's led by the Queens Museum. I think it's at 1230 every Tuesday. The Queens Mu Museum facilitates a half an hour Twitter chat around oh, the topic. Cool. That's arts education focused a lot of the times. I know uh, my arts ed tech, we did a arts education and technology focused live Twitter chat a couple months ago. It was a lot of fun. STEAM is really big right now, inserting the A for arts into STEM. Arts Ed Tech. Arts Ed is really the main identifier hashtag for our field. And EduChat is another one of those regularly happening Twitter chats. Um, you could search any of these hashtags. Go back, them. Jessica, because we, we were at the birth of hashtag arts ed, and I went, tell them how easy it is to make up your own, and, 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 then, it, and then if it gets picked up, it becomes the use. Right. That's, that's really, I, for me, I think it's great when somebody kind of steps on a hashtag. I know there's a guy in North or South Carolina that also is an arts ed tech. Um, I added NYT to identify myself. Um, so sometimes he and I will have conversations. If you look at a feed under that arts ed tech um, hashtag, sometimes we'll interact. It's really great, and we'll start sharing information that way. That's excellent. That's funny, um, the, the stepping on the feet thing. You'll find out real quick. <laughs> yeah, nobody's stolen my 100 Days I Love You New York Instagram campaign. Yes. I'm surprised you, can't, you, you could sell that almost. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you can totally make up whatever you want. I mean, TGIF is a popular one. SF, Follow Friday. Usually people will list a bunch of um, Twitter handles to follow, like Follow Friday Arts Ed, and there would be a listing of organizations and people that are kind of cutting edge innovators in the field. So, it sounds um, like um, it's one of those things that you're just going to learn by doing. Um, yes, and, and, and that's, that's if we want to move on to this next oh, slide. Of um, course. There you go. Oh, before we get to the final slide, this is a really great resource tool, um, Edutopia. They have a fantastic online website, but you can see their Twitter handle on the right. Um, they've been releasing some really great um, lists and reports about how social media is being used in the classroom. And I know, Christy, you and I were talking before we jumped on about uh, something else that they had put out about apps. Yeah, just uh, yesterday, they had the top 15 apps for the classroom. And I was so impressed. Um, they have, they, I'm not sure who the woman is that's curating them, but she seems to know what she's doing. And she's a real classroom teacher. Yeah. And so, so you know, I, I believe her. And I went in and looked at some of them. And I'm not a classroom teacher, but I could imagine what those apps would do, like mm -hmm. the screen throwing and screen sharing. And, yeah, um, flipping the classroom, all of, all of that. So um, I would recommend checking out Edutopia. Okay, let's go on to the final slide. Okay. 
I think this is the final slide. Yes. So here's some basic Twitter etiquette, the do's and don'ts. And there are a lot more than what I have listed here. But really quickly, some things that you should do. So if you're new to Twitter, set up a Twitter profile. Um, and like I said before, really use a recent photo of yourself. Um, it just helps you become more recognizable. And, and um, the don'ts, there's this generic egg um, image that's for Twitter. You don't want that egg to linger because it really looks like a spam account. And I didn't talk about spam, but there are ways to block people or if people are sending you things as a way of self-promoting themselves, you can um, go into your spam settings and um, get rid of those uh, trolls, as we call them. Trolls. Another, another do, start following people in your field. So once you have your Twitter account set up, you don't have to be out there quickly making your own comments. Just start finding people that are in the arts education field um, and, and follow them. Add them to your community and retweet. So if you see something, a link, a photo, a comment that you really like, just hit the retweet button. And anytime you do this, it will show up. Um, and anyone who's following you can see it in your feed. And anyone who you are following will be able to see that tweet. Engage in conversation with others and in interact on a regular basis. Um, so this is something, like I said, it, it can be addicting. Um, you want to be consistent and use Twitter at least a couple times a day because it is so instant and in real time. It's not something you want to just do once a week. Um, so you really need to be active on Twitter. And post photos, videos, and links to websites and other important information. Um, Facebook is still a more visual platform, but um, it's helpful to capture people's attention if you have especially a photo. And some of the other don'ts, um, don't get so hung up on grammar. Um, you're not composing real sentences because there just isn't enough room. So over time, as you start following people, um, you'll learn the ropes of what the Twitter lingo is. And something that someone told me um, to be mindful about, you want to keep seven to ten extra characters if possible. And there's um, a counter that will let you know how many characters you have left. Something about retweeting. Um, sometimes the, the tail end of the tweet will get cut off if you max out your characters. So that's one thing to be um, thinking about. And don't retweet a bunch of tweets in a row. So you want to mix it up. You want to put out your own comments, retweet, and favorite. But, um, and this doesn't become a problem so much as you start having more people following you or if you're following others. Um, but as you get started, just be mindful of that. Um, like I, I said you before. Know, it's funny, like when you say retweet, um, like you're you're right now describing basic etiquette for um, making sure you get followed or you're following and, and you're being right. a good person. But if you're brand new and you don't do anything but retweet. I mean, there's no laws here. No one's going to no, no, no. pull you over and arrest no, you. No, what I'm saying with, with this is like if I'm looking at some uh, at the main home feed and there's like three or four tweets in a row that I like and you just hit retweet, 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 um, the timing. Uh, people, people are impatient and they find that to be annoying. For whatever reason, oh, okay. so those are people, people that are on following it. you. Yeah. yeah, so that's what that I meant sense. by that. That makes sense. Um, and don't spend all day on Twitter. You can really quickly get addicted. Um, one of my rules is that I have certain times throughout the day that I'll check my profile, and I only go back to one hour's worth of content. I mean, you could go back two, three, four, five hours worth of of Twitter comments. Um, so my general rule is to only go back one hour. And 
like anything in life, don't be rude. Um, sometimes people can, can get into really heated conversations on Twitter. Um, and I would recommend just not to engage in anything negative. Really keep everything positive when you're on Twitter. And that's so, so, basically so it. Tweet, so with tweets, when, when, let's say I say something rude and nasty um, about uh, my mother or whoever, an organization, <laughs> it's permanently out there, right? Yeah. I mean, it's forever. Yeah. And, when it, and sometimes you hear on the news people will pull a tweet back. How is that possible? You can delete it. But there's a period of time where it's up there. So if someone catches the tweet before it's deleted, there is a permanent record of that. Like if someone took a screenshot of it, like Anthony Weiner here in New York City got into big <laughs> trouble um, putting out really stupid things. And you yes. know these reporters are on Twitter all day long. So yeah, you can be, you can be caught. Um, even though it's deleted, there is that window of time when it's live. That someone could catch you. Gosh, Jessica, so that's this a quick is overview. I mean, I'd love to have we you back and through. go deep into the classroom stuff. Yes, that would be a lot of fun. So we didn't really have time for um, live Q and A, but please feel free if you have questions. You can always tweet me at Jessica L. Wilt, and my email address is Jessica at JessicaWilt.com. That's wonderful. Um, that's great, Jessica. I think you live it and breathe it, and so it's so easy to see it. And um, I really do want to bring you back because I want to dive into some of those classroom examples. So, so it sounds like you're agreeable to do such, and we have a really yeah. engaged audience. So I know that they're grateful for your for your work today. And um, without further ado, I think we should wrap this sucker up and say, hey, Hail Mary Friday. Fantastic. TGIF. Have a great weekend, <laughs> everybody. You too. Bye-bye.